So on this heating curve, you can notice temperatures on the y-axis and energies on the x-axis. Every time you have a slope, that's your different states of matter. So on the first slope, we have low temperature, so that would be a solid. High temperature, we have a gas. And in the middle, we have a liquid. So again, on the slopes are solid, liquid, and gas. On the plateaus, that's where your phase changes are occurring. So make sure that you make a note whenever you're drawing it that this first plateau is our melting point. So whatever the melting point is corresponds to the first plateau. And then our boiling point corresponds to the second plateau. If you're going from a solid to a liquid, that would be melting. And then liquid to solid is freezing. If you notice, the temperature is remaining constant while it's undergoing a phase change. And then liquid to gas is vaporization, and then gas to liquid is condensation. On all three of our slopes, kinetic energy is increasing because the temperature is increasing. On the plateaus, potential energy is increasing because as you are melting the substance, you're putting energy to break attractions or if you're going from liquid to solid, you're freezing it and so you're releasing that potential energy as the particles are getting closer together. Which brings us to endothermic and exothermic. Endothermic is when energy is absorbed from the surroundings and therefore the container generally feels cold. But you can't think feels cold and feels hot when we're doing phase changes. So in this section, when we think endothermic, the atoms are going to be getting further apart. It takes energy to pull them apart. So from ice to water, the molecules have to overcome attraction so they can slide past each other. And then water to water vapor, we've got to break the attractions all together to turn it into a gas since gases don't have attractions. So we've got to add energy to melt or to vaporize. Looking back at our graph, as we go up the graph, energy is increasing. So all of these processes are endothermic as we go up the graph. Notice melting is endothermic. That's not getting cold. So again, do not think getting cold or hot for phase changes. Exothermic is when energy is released into the surroundings. If it's a change, like a chemical change, which we'll talk later, the container will feel hot. But in this section, you've got to think, are the atoms getting closer or further? In this case, the atoms are going to be getting closer together. So the only way to get them closer is if they release some of that energy. Water has a lot of kinetic energy, or water vapor, I should say, gases. Gases have a lot of kinetic energy, so they've got to lose some of that kinetic energy to form liquid. And then liquids have to lose energy to turn into solids, since solids have the least amount of kinetic energy. Go ahead and pause the video and figure out if these are endo or exothermic. Restart when you're done. So the first one, freezing, was going from a liquid to a solid. So you should have said exo because the particles are getting closer together. Vaporization is liquid to gas. So that one's going to be endothermic. Melting was solid to liquid, so the particles are getting further apart, so that's endothermic. Condensation is gas to liquid, and so that one is exothermic. The particles are getting closer together. Sublimation and deposition weren't on our chart, but if you recall, sublimation was solid to gas. 
So the particles are getting further apart, and the only way they could get further apart is if they absorb energy, which means deposition going from solid to gas, so they've got to release that energy. Go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own. Restart when you've got your answers. So the first thing you should have done is said that this is solid, this is liquid, and this is gas. And then you should have thought, well, freezing is going from a liquid to a solid. So I'm a liquid and I'm going to a solid, which means C is where freezing begins. If the question said, where does freezing end? It's a liquid, freeze, 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 until it gets to B. Vaporization was going from a liquid to a gas. So I'm a liquid, there's a gas, so it's gonna start at point D. Melting, you're a solid and you're going to a liquid, so I'm a solid, it's gonna start at B. So notice freezing and melting begin at different points. So when it says where does something begin, you've gotta think what are you starting as and where are you ending? But notice melting and freezing both would have a melting point of negative 110 or freezing point of negative 110. Melting point and freezing point are the same temperature. And then finally condensation was liquid to, or gas to liquid. So gas to liquid, it would be point E. Go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own. Restart when you're done. Lowest kinetic energy is the lowest temperature, so that would be A. From C to D, we're on a slope and temperature is changing, so kinetic energy must be changing. From E to D, we're on a plateau, temperature is not changing, so potential energy must be changing. How much heat is required to melt it? Well, melting was going from B to C. B is 405, C is 610. So 610 minus 405 is a difference of 205 joules per gram. Vaporizing, you're going from 1630 or 820 to 1630. So 1630 minus 820, your heat of vaporization should have been 810 joules per gram. Is the heat of fusion or heat of vaporization greater in this substance? And then why do you think it's greater? I'm going to pause the video and answer that one. So you can clearly see from our calculations a second ago that the heat of vaporization is greater and the reason has to do with the attractions. Heat of vaporization, because instead of just weakening the attraction, solids and liquids are both very close to each other. Liquids can just flow and so there's a little bit of space between them while liquids to gas, we've got to break that attraction altogether. And it's going to take a lot more it's going to take a lot more energy to break an attraction than to just weaken it. Go ahead and try the next one. Restart when you're done. So this substance boils at 80 degrees, but if it was boiling at 110, then that means that it must have a stronger attraction because a higher boiling point means that more kinetic energy was needed to overcome those attractions. The higher the melting or boiling point, the stronger the attractions. Enthalpy of fusion or heat of fusion is the energy required to melt one gram of a substance at its melting point. And our equation is Q equals MHF. So here we're melting, we're not changing any temperatures. We're not rearranging our equation. So we have our mass and then our HF. 
So we just need to multiply those. And then we needed three sig figs, so one, six, eight, zero, zero joules. Or 1.68 times 10 to the fourth joules. Heat of vaporization is the energy required to vaporize one gram of a substance at its boiling point. So go ahead and calculate how much energy it would take to vaporize this water. Restart when you're done. So just like before, we have our mass and our heat of vaporization. Multiplying those out, you should have gotten this. We wanted three sig figs, which gives us that answer, or 1.14 times 10 to the fifth joules. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you have your answer. So our weaker attractions must have been substance two. Because substance two has a lower melting point and it has a lower boiling point. So less energy was needed to overcome those substance two's attractions. And finally, at what point does condensation begin? Restart when you figured out your letter. So condensation was gas to liquid. Here's my gas, there's my liquid, and so point G is where condensation begins.